guys, it's Sam, and this is my April wrap-up. Not only is it my April wrap-up, but it's also my Magical Readathon Owls Edition wrap-up, as well as my Tome Topple wrap-up. A lot of things happened in April. April was my best reading month so far, if you count like how many books read as like how good the reading month is, and that's just what I'm saying today. It's not necessarily what I think all the time, but you know, I'm trying to get my TBR done, as you know, so reading a lot of books in a month is good for me. About 46% of all of the books that I read so far this year were read in April. Your girl did good. So since I did so much in April reading-wise, there's a lot of like overlap and multitasking of books, so I will tell you what each book did for me as far as what I was reading it for as we go through this as well. So the first book that I read this month was The Calculating Stars by Mary Robinette Kowal. This is a book I actually read on audio. This was for the Astronomy Owl and is also one of the Booktube SFF Award nominees for the science fiction category. This is the first book in an adult historical science fiction series, so this takes place in I think the 1950s or 1960s, and this is in an alternate history where there is a giant meteor, almost apocalyptic event that wipes out a lot of the East Coast of the United States and sets a lot of global things into action, and so there is a more important space race going on. And in this story you follow a Jewish-American main character who is a lady scientist, and she wants to be a lady astronaut. So this follows her story, what is going on in the world science fiction-wise, and kind of their quest to get into space so that if there is this apocalyptic event on Earth they will be safe, and then all of the social and political things happening with her and her friends trying to be lady astronauts. I loved this audiobook. This I definitely recommend to read on audio. The narrator is actually the author, and she's won awards for her narrating of books and such, so I definitely recommend that. What I really liked about this was the realism of it, so there are some harder-hitting topics. There is some racism, both towards people of color and towards Alma, who is Jewish, along with her family. Then there's also some talk of sexual assault or sexual harassment, and there's also talk of mental health, such as anxiety, medicine, and suicidal ideation and talk of suicide. So there's a number of trigger warnings in here, but I really enjoyed Alma's main character. As I mentioned, there is talk of anxiety in here. Basically they say like how almost all the world is anxious, but there is still this stigma against it and also against taking medication, and Alma is somebody who has an anxiety disorder and has panic attacks. So she was just a great character. She also is married to another scientist, and they have a really great loving relationship. The only thing that I didn't like about that sometimes is Towards the end, I kind of got sick of the repetition of the fact that like every time the characters were having sex, they were throwing space and rocket innuendos at one another, and I'm like, okay, this was cute the first couple times you guys did it, but like, do you really talk about rockets and make space puns like every time you have sex? Like, you do you, but all like, stop. So anyway, I really enjoyed this. I think this is a duology. I know there's at least a second book. I don't know if there's more than that. And I gave this a four out of five stars. The second book I read was Slayer by Kirsten White. This was for Herbology Owl. And I've already talked about this. I have done a full review on this, which I will link on the screen. I also was involved in a podcast talking about this. This is a book that's part of a new series that takes place in the Buffy universe, following the events of the show, but also some of the comics. And it follows a main character who's actually part of the Watchers, if you are familiar with the show, and she is supposedly the very last Slayer. I did not like this book. I gave this book 1.5 stars, the 0.5 just being for the fact that I did like hearing things about like Buffy characters and like the Buffy world and everything, but this main character was a lot of things that I just don't like in my main character. She's pretty naive, but she's also just oblivious to everything going around around her. Also, most of the plot just hinges on miscommunication between all the characters, and all the characters not really talking for any good reason. And our main character also hates Buffy, which I think makes sense of her character, but is a pretty poor choice if you're writing a series that really has to be read by people who spent seven seasons with Buffy and know why she made the decision she made. So... Overall, I don't think that this book was really for me, and I will not continue with this series at all. The next book I read was Vengeful by V.E. Schwab. This was for The Potions Owl. This was also a Booktube SFF Award nominee for the fantasy, no, for the science fiction category, and was my April book pick for Patreon. So every month my Patreon supporters get to vote in a poll and a book that I'll read and review that month, and this was chosen for 
April. So if you are interested in voting in my TBR and really participating in my channel and deciding things that I'll do, I will leave my Patreon on the screen. I have already done a full review and discussion on this, so I will link that on the screen. This is the sequel to Vicious, which is many people's favorites. This was on a favorites for me as well when I read Vicious within the last six months, I believe. And a Vicious to me could have been a standalone. I go into depth in my review, but I felt like this really missed the mark. I am really sick of how Victoria Schwab writes female characters and tears them down and then is like, I'm so good about writing female characters. I go into it in my review, but this just had pacing issues. I didn't like how most of the characters were throwaway. I didn't like how I could feel where the plot was going. And it wasn't as tight of a plot as Vicious was. Like Vicious was so good in every way and this was a lot more meandering and wasted a lot of the book doing things just to get certain characters together and I could see what it was doing and yeah. So I still enjoyed reading this. This is still fast paced. I still like the world. I like some of the character interactions and such. There's still some really good characters in here, but I gave this 3.5 to 3.75 stars. Enjoyable, but does it need to be a series? I don't think so. Then Tome Topple started. So all these books are Tome Topple books as well as whatever else that they qualify as. So the first book I read for Tome Topple was Foundry Side by Robert Jackson Bennett. This is also my Charms Owl. This is the first book in an adult fantasy series. It follows our main character of Sancia and she is a thief but she has some special abilities in which in this world there are different magics where you kind of inscribe magic into an object and it makes it do other things. So it's kind of like that's their version of technology. That's magic and it's called shriving and that's how you control objects and such. She is able to listen to not only those kinds of objects but then any object really. So if she's climbing a wall she knows where all of the like marks where she can climb up are or if there's a loose spot or anything like that. It's a pretty powerful ability for a thief to have. But she doesn't really know why she has this ability and she was tasked but and she has been tasked to go and steal some package but just not look at what she's stealing and everything kind of goes from there. This book was so much fun. I obviously got an arc of this last year when it first came out and put it off because I figured I was going to like it but I just wanted to have the time to love it and I really enjoyed so much about this. I have a review coming up for this so look forward to that but this was so enjoyable in every way. I love the world. The world is so much fun. In the city that this takes place in there are a bunch of merchant houses and they control all that magic that I talked about. Like they have the people that can make that magic but everyone else outside of those houses lives basically in squalor and the setting for this just was like so atmospheric. The magic was so cool. Also the band of characters that you get to follow seem like they're going to be tropey but they aren't. Like they are based on cool tropes that like a lot of people enjoy but instead of following those tropes to the T they are their own unique complex spin and the plot was very fast paced as well. I highly enjoyed this and I gave it five out of five stars. This was also a booktube SFF award nominee for the fantasy category. Another book for Tome Topple that I read was Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor. This also fit the Care of Magical Creatures category for the Owls and is a booktube SFF award nominee. This is a pretty popular series on booktube so I'm not going to go into it because this picks up right after the first book Strange the Dreamer and if you know anything about that then you know kind of where that picks up. I was not a huge fan of Strange Dreamer. I liked it but I didn't love it as much as the rest of booktube seems to so I was very eh about going into this book. I just didn't really feel like reading it and for some reason I didn't want to pick up the physical copy. Thankfully I liked the audiobook version so this I listened to on audio and I was having a much better time with this. This I'm also doing a review on so look forward to that but I just enjoyed the plot of this more. I really like how Lainey Taylor dives into war and trauma and I didn't focus as much for me on the romance elements of it which is a lot of what I had a problem with in the first book so while that was still present it was easier for me to just kind of ignore in favor of a lot of the other world things that are going on. I really like the worlds that Lainey Taylor creates and the lore that she creates and her really good focus on war and trauma and especially in this book recovery from trauma. So I definitely enjoyed this. 
Still, because of some of like the romance stuff and whatever, wasn't quite five out of five stars for me, but this was four out of five stars, and I did like it better than Strange the Dreamer. Then my last book I read during Tome Topple was Obsidio by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. This was also the Arithmancy Owl, and this is the third book in the Illuminae trilogy. So again, this picks up after the events of the first two books. I am going to be doing a review on this book as well. I loved Illuminae so much. I gave it five out of five stars. It was very unexpected for me. I was very connected to it. Gemina I found to be a bit of a disappointment, and Obsidio continued to be a disappointment. So this book, I was very ugh, about, it was still fun, fast paced, and I could read about two days based on the format and just everything, but I found that it repeated a lot of the same things that happened in the first two books. So it continued to use a lot of like tricks and twists that we've already seen. So I, and I knew what they were going to do with them. So I wasn't really on the edge of my seat or really connected to the characters anymore. I also don't love how some of the characters are written. I feel like there's a certain level with some of the characters of like, hey there fellow youths, because this is being written by an adult. And you could just be like, that, that's not how kids, even kids in the future in space, would act. <laughs> it's like, this is how kids might have acted in like 2008. Like it was just a lot of that. And yeah, I just was really disappointed in this conclusion. I thought that this was going to maybe make up for Gemini and kind of go back to what I loved about Illuminae, but unfortunately Illuminae was so unique and fun and I enjoyed the character so much. And then the next two books were so similar that it wasn't new and interesting and unique anymore. So I gave this one 2.5 out of 5 stars. I enjoyed it at times, like it was still kind of fun, but I've forgotten about it since. I don't feel like it really had enough time and it just used a lot of the same things like I said. So there's a lot of things that really annoyed me about it. So I'll be doing, like I said, a full review on this coming up later. The next book I read was Circe by Madeline Miller. This was for the Ancient Runes Owl, and this was also a Booktube SFF Award nominee. And this is a retelling or an expansion of the story of Circe, who is one of the challenges that Odysseus faces in the Iliad on his way back home to Ithaca, but you don't really know much about Circe in that story, and in this it really expands her story. She is the daughter of a titan, she therefore is a titan herself. They kind of use titan and god interchangeably, and that's kind of how like Greek mythology works too, because there were gods that were titans, and then they birthed other gods, and those gods like condemn the titans and all the wars and all the stuff, because there's all this stuff going on in Greek mythology. Madeline Miller also wrote the Song of Achilles, so she just really likes that time period and that history and those myths, and I don't know why I put this one off, because she does it just as well in this book. She really expands on all of the people that Cersei might have come in contact with, all the different gods. She's really good about showing how like manipulative and evil a lot of the gods are, and the background of our stories and like who makes history and, and what is told. And she does a really good job about morally gray characters, but not in a way where you feel like the morally gray characters are patting themselves on the back too much. And just the complexity of people and tragedy. Like her books are like very tragic. And even going into them, you're like, I know this is going to be tough, but you're like, you keep waiting for something good to happen. But I loved this. I'm very attached to Cersei as a character. I want to be the witch of Aya, but not live her life. <laughs> but I really enjoy like a lot of the lines that were said about femininity and womanhood and all of this stuff. It's so good. I am going to be doing a full review on it, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to articulate just how much I really did enjoy this book and how much I enjoyed this story. I also really recommend the audiobook. The narrator is really beautiful voice and really well done and just really like evoked that feeling of this character and the things she was going through. So obviously after all my gushing you guys know that I gave it five out of five stars. And if you're keeping track you will have noticed that all of the books that I have read for the fantasy category for the booktube SFF awards, so that's the adult fantasy, that's Grey Sister by Mark Lawrence, Foundry Side by Robert Jackson Bennett, and Cersei by Madeline Miller. I've rated all of them five stars. <laughs> so when it comes to award show season, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. The next book that I read was Unearthed by Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner, and this is for the Divination Owl as well, and this follows two characters who are on this new world, this new alien planet. In the future, Earth is facing a crisis, like global warming and all this environmental crises, and this alien planet has been revealed as a place that might have the answers to Earth's crisis. Well, one of the characters that's there is a bit of a, like, thief, tomb raider, 
scavenger, whatever you would want to call her, and she is there to collect tech in order to make money. The other character is a scholar, and he is there to study the place, and they end up having to team up as an unlikely pair, and everything goes on from there. I almost, towards the beginning of this, DNF'd it. I was going to give it 100 pages, and I ultimately did, but the first 100 pages were rough. Really the first, like, 70, I just was not really feeling it. The story was taking a long time to get to where it needed to go, and I was really more in it for, like, the tomb raiding space elements. And this book, and this is just kind of indicative of the Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner's other stuff that I've read. I've read only one other book, but they tend to write these, like, space romances, and there's a lot of focus on the romance, and these two characters who just met looking at each other and saying, thinking how hot the other one is, and it's just like, is is it really that time right now? Like, is this really appropriate timing for that? So I found that to be really annoying. But once I got to, like, the, the fun puzzles and the, like, tomb raiding elements, that was a lot of fun. And it was a really quick read, so fun in that way, in space, and yay. But ultimately, I just wasn't really hooked by this. I ended up giving it 2.5 out of 5 stars, like right dead in the middle, again, like some of the other books I've read this month. I didn't love it, I didn't hate it, but I don't think I'll be continuing with the series because of where it left off. I feel like the things that I was enjoying about this book aren't going to continue in the second book, and this is a duology, so I'm kind of uninterested. I don't plan on continuing with this series. Then the last book that I read this month was Pride by E.B. Zaboy, and this was also for the Muggle Studies Owl. And this is a modern retelling of Pride and Prejudice that takes place in Brooklyn, and the entire cast are people of color, mostly mixed race. Our main character, or our, like, Elizabeth character, is a black, Haitian, and I want to say some Caribbean, Dominican. So in this story, it takes place in Brooklyn, and the rich family, like Mr. Darcy and Mr. Bingley, are really two brothers, part of an African-American family that are wealthy, that move into her part of Brooklyn, and everything kind of goes from there. So, so as a Pride and Prejudice fan, this was interesting to read through and see the Pride and Prejudice beats, see how different things were switched around and modernized or made more appropriate for these characters and their personalities. So that was really fun, and it was a quick read, and you're set, kind of watching the tension and everything. As the story went along, I feel like the second half I didn't enjoy as much. I felt like some of the characters were a little inconsistent, and I honestly felt like these characters didn't have enough time. This is a fairly short book, and it follows a lot of the major beats of the story, but there's a lot of like plot things that you don't really get to sit with in the story, and you don't really get like the significant of, and they're kind of a lot more simple. I found this retelling to be more simple than I was expecting it to be. Also, the, like, Lizzie Darcy relationship is a little bit different, and that could be cool to some people, but for me, I was just like, this doesn't really make sense for, like, these characters and their, like, attraction, and I felt like with Lizzie and Darcy, there is that kind of, like, slow burn, slowly over time, learning to like each other. I kind of felt like the Lizzie character hated the Darcy character all the way up to the end, for the most part, and still was, like, against them being together, really, even in the end. So I was like, I don't... I don't understand, like, what's going on here. So ultimately, I also gave this 2.5 stars, because I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it. There's parts that I found enjoyable. It's really fun to read Pride and Prejudice retellings. I think this was a lot of fun. I like that this was a diverse retelling. So especially for people that want to see more diversity in Pride and Prejudice or would like to see themselves in Pride and Prejudice, I think this is definitely a book that I would recommend. But for me, I think it needed more time with the things that it was trying to say and for its characters to kind of flourish a bit more. So those are all of the books that I read for all of the readathons in all of April. So I read nine books for the Owls, which means I got an outstanding, but I noticed when I was going over everything, the two careers that I picked potentially, um, Orologist, I think it was, and Mind Medic, I didn't get enough Enough owls for either of those in the right categories. But I still got an outstanding just based on number of books read, but just the combinations of things that I read happened to not quite work out. I think I would have been able to get it if I didn't DNF one book. I, I DNF'd one of the contemporary books that I was reading to potentially pick back up, but maybe not, just wasn't really feeling it. If I would have pushed through that one, maybe, but I think I ultimately just ran out of time. So nine books total for the whole month and for the Owls Readathon, three of those also for Tome Topple, and five of those were BookTube SFF Award nominees. So I was doing all the multitasking with my reading this month, and I'm very proud of myself, and I hope that that carries over into May. So comment down below, let me know how your reading month in April went. Let me know if you participated in any of these readathons as well, and how you did, and all of that. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see all of you guys soon. Bye! <laughs>